this is just a little little Cutco MLM knife. It's still a good knife, but I think an eight inch might be better for me, especially because of like how small my hands are. Also, I don't have a proper stance right now. <laughs> Trying to face the camera. Damn, boy, he fit! Uh, <laughs> hey there. It's been a little bit since I made a video, but, you know, it's taken a little bit to uh, get used to the schedule of school and work kind of be able to get everything done all at once, but I got a knife in my hand, and we got a stove behind me. So we're gonna cook today. But I figured I would talk about everything that I've kind of learned so far going through culinary school. We'll say it's been the first week because we had just one class dur uh, during the week of Martin Luther King Day, and figured, you know, just kind of impart some knowledge and kind of share with you guys what I've learned so far in that week while I go ahead and cook and prepare a meal for my girlfriend June and I. But I did edit a video for them on their channel, so you can actually check the link for that down below. But here's a few clips. <laughs> this ended in madness. Me after a night drinking. Pick another palette, pick another color, get your shit together, buddy. They really need to eat gluten free because it really messes with them and their like digestional uh, tract and everything. Really makes a real like rumble in the jungle for them. Uh, and it's no good and it's much better for them to eat gluten free. So, with that, we tend to grab a few extra like prepare things like kits that make it easy to make some gluten free meals uh, just like quick and on the fly. So, today, while I go ahead and talk about all that, I'm just gonna go ahead and make some Thai sweet and sour noodles by SPAA Natural Foods. It's a noodle meal kit, and I actually found this at Marshall's, and it's all gluten-free, and then you just need to basically just go ahead and add your veggies and your protein, and you just go from there. Now, we've been trying to eat vegan, so I'm gonna be using the Guardian Teriyaki Chicken Strips. I actually really love these things. They're just so delicious and versatile. You don't need to use the teriyaki sauce that comes with them. They're plain and unseasoned as is. But there's so many different things that can be done with these. And I really like using them for buffalo chicken wraps and actually making buffalo like crispy wings because there's a bunch of different ways to crisp them up because they are, I believe, soy based. So, you know, you can use cornstarch and panko and just make sure that you get it to stick on there with either some water or like an egg wash substitute, which is what I use. I use it like a Bob's Red Mill. But we'll get into that in another video another time. I actually started the water behind me to get that boiling because this is a real quick kit. You just toss the noodles in some hot water, take it off heat, and let it sit, and then you toss this all in the wok together with your veggies. It takes maybe five, maybe ten minutes. My first class that I have is food production one and also the lab, and then I'm also taking sanitation and safety currently. Now they're both accelerated courses, so they're going to end sometime around like March, and then I start my next set, which that's going to be food production two and I believe baking. Now in food production one, that's obviously you're just learning the basics. When we started with knife skills, and then we go from knife skills to stock, to soups, to salads and sauces, and then to sandwiches. And then from then we go on to food production too. Now, with the knife skills and everything so far, what we've learned is, I basically learned the actual legitimate measurements for different types of dicing. If you want small, medium, and large diced, I'll put them right here. Then also I've learned a bunch of the different like French terminology because with cooking, especially as like even like ballet, a bunch of different like other forms of uh, like, I guess, we could say art and expression, I guess food is definitely a way of that. There's a lot of French. <laughs> I like that laugh. And I don't know any French at all, but I can kind of like pick up from context uh, what some of the words mean, just because of being around, I guess, the terms with cooking for so long. I don't know, it, it, like it, for some reason I picked them up really easily, and it's just really easy for me to understand without even having, or having taken like a French class. But I have started Duolingo to do like Swedish, French, and Spanish, so that's also been a help as well. And with the knife skills, you know, I actually had to uh, get a knife roll, thanks to the help of my parents, because I didn't get a uh, book voucher uh, with my student loans in order to pay for any of my stuff, so it all had to come out of pocket. But honestly, I think these knives are better than the ones that I had a, the option to get at the school. They were like Mercer cutlery, which I've read some 
pretty choice Reddit reviews. <laughs> I ended up settling with the Victorinox. Uh, my chef actually recommended these. He, he said these were the first set of knives that he actually started with when he came over from China uh, as a uh, young boy and, uh, well, young man and uh, aspiring chef. And so I'm really, I was really excited to use this set. I'll definitely like get more into it another time in like another video, but let me zip it real quick. Isn't that just nice? It's got chef's knife, it's got my honing steel, paring knife, bread knife. It's got all my knives that I need. The only thing that it didn't come with, that the school set came with, was measuring cups and a, um, and a peeler, but I just got my own and the chef wanted us to get our own different peelers anyway. He didn't like the one that the kit came with and I got my own measuring cup. So I'm all good there. And it didn't come with a Santoku, but we're not gonna learn how to use the Santoku knife in food prep one. He doesn't care for the Santoku knife. We're just gonna learn how to use the 10 inch chef's knife. And one thing that I have noticed actually from holding that chef's knife though on the topic of knife skills is that I think it's much easier for me to hold like an eight inch. I know this is not an eight inch at all. This is just a little, little Cutco MLM knife. It's still a good knife but I think an 8 inch might be better for me especially because of like how small my hands are and just with the uh, like balancing point because the way that you grip a knife is you got to find where the balance is seeing on, on this one it's a handle grip it's it's a weird knife because you're supposed to pinch grip and hold and then let the knife do the work for you going forward we also learned an uh, interesting cut with the French uh, terminology as well was the chiffonade cut I think that's how you say that and Oh, my water's boiling, which is basically ribbon cutting is the best way I can ex I can think of to explain that. And it's ribbon cutting like leafy vegetables. We did collard greens and I'll put a, bit, a little picture right here. Chef was saying that like typically it's definitely done a lot to like basil because of uh, garnishing. It looks really, really nice when it's cut real like, nice and fine like that, especially for pizza. So we'll take that off the heat, let that sit. And we're gonna stir fry our chicken strips and our vegetables. Most of my veggies I actually already prepped last night. I did some carrots and just some green onion to set up because I would definitely love to add some exotic mushrooms, which I actually have sitting in the fridge, but I'm not gonna go ahead and add that into there because I definitely want a lot and I'm not gonna make it so hard to pick around, but I am gonna add some broccoli and I have some sugar uh, snap peas that are frozen that I'm gonna toss in there. All right, let's walk and roll. I think that's enough about the knife skills and from there, we have actually done some of the stuff with the stocks because we had like one class during Martin Luther King week that was just kind of a general overview of the class talking about what we're going to do. And so we didn't do anything with our knives or like anything cooking wise with that. But this week on our uh, two days of class, we actually did a whole lot. So we started with the stock and we learned all of the components that make the stock which starting with them it goes from your bones to your liquid which is typically water then you have your aromatic vegetables and then you have your sachet which is going to be your herbs and your spices typically you know traditionally put in a bag because you want to make sure that you have a nice clear uh, stock you don't want anything floating around in it so chefs would have a cloth bag put all their stuff and their ingredients in it and throw that in there for the herbs and spices and then also that occasionally even really makes it real easy to reuse them because sometimes you can uh, do a secondary stock to it, or called like, I'm gonna butcher this, a remoulage. Remouillage. Which is basically just redoing the stock if your bones and your whole uh, mirepoix and everything look nice. Because that brings us to the next one, which is gonna be the mirepoix. Now that is your mix of your carrots, your celery, and uh, your onion. No wait, no, sorry. The mirepoix is actually the term for the your aromatic vegetables and stuff, but um, yeah, that's a mix of like two to one to one on the onion, celery to carrots, and yeah. And then from there you have a couple different uh, characteristics of your stock that make a good stock, which is going to be, of course, overall your flavor, your cooking, your food, you want everything to taste really good. And then other than that, it's going to be your color. Is it a, are you, did you make a chicken stock? Is it as clear as it's supposed to be like yellowish? Did you make a brown stock, like a beef stock? Is it actually like a nice ambery rich brown? Or did you make a vegetable stock? Is it a nice clear like veggie stock? Um, it just like things like that. It's, uh, it, it's the clarity of it and the color of it. There's a bunch of different characteristics that I'll actually put the legitimate list right here. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, those are your components to a good stock. So we've learned that. We haven't gone on to the next topic, which would be actually making a soup yet. Real quick while the oil gets ready, we're gonna prep this garlic, because I wanna get a little bit of garlic going in there before I drop my carrots, my broccoli, and I'm gonna do up some onion real quick. Now this is an electric stove, and it's not gas, so it's not gonna hold constant if it gets keeps heating up, so you gotta be quick. We also learned proper technique for like dicing onions, which was a fun time as well. And also peeling them. So far though, that's basically what I've learned in food prep. Now other than that, I did say that I was taking a sanitation course. Now the sanitation course has actually been real interesting and eye-opening. A lot of the restaurants that I do like around here or uh, would like to try, I've noticed uh, as a result of taking this course, um, have had high priority violations recently. A lot of them due to time temperature abuse, which is a very common thing. Dang it, I cut off the root. I didn't mean to do that. It's gonna make it hard to dice this. Whatever. I think I still have just a little bit of it right there. Right now. <laughs> Trying to face the camera. Damn, boy, he thick! Victor Knox knife will just go right through that right there. A little bit of sharpening, this would be fine. But there we go. There's a nice little, like, small dice. Once it all separates and cooks out, it'll be nice, small, little pieces. Things can be cut out, I wasn't talking. Oh, okay. Good. I was just checking. <laughs> yeah, I guess it sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Garlic. Yeah, so back to sanitation and safety. Hey, it's Triple P, Post Production Pineapple, here to address you little PPs about the fact that none of what I say here is really all that fun or interesting. And so we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward and skip all this. Sanitation and safety is important. Don't skip it. Make sure to wash your hands. Yeah. Let's get back to it. You don't want to make your friends or your family sick if you're cooking for them. You know, you don't want to make patrons sick if they're coming into your restaurant. That's just how it works. We've been learning, you know, just all about that, trying to prevent all that, all the different measures for prevention. And actually, right now, I am breaking three different rules. What are they? and my necklace. I know rings are okay if it's a just a plain band. You can wear one ring and it can be silicone or metal, but it's got to be plain, no ridges, it's just smooth. That's it. We're going to go ahead and add the noodles and the sauce in a minute, and then go ahead and I will see you guys after that's done. Okay, got my bowl now. It's all done. It actually smells really good. I've tried the uh, pad thai kit from this before, but this looks delicious. I'm so ready to dig into that. I'm gonna try it real quick, then we'll get into the uh, outro, because that's really about all that I learned uh, so far. I mean, there is some like more stuff if I go into like deeper detail. I think whenever I do my knife review is when like I'll actually show some of like, the cutting techniques and stuff I've learned. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Look. Maybe a little bit of cornstarch, make the sauce a little more like sticky to the noodles and stuff, but has a nice flavor through it. I know that they're definitely gonna add some soy sauce because they love their sodium. <laughs> Overall, for like a quick maybe 15 minute dish, I think it's good. It's a nice, nice dinner and it can only get better with more vegetables that are added, different ones, even maybe just taking the kit and making your own sauce mix. Like, because the noodles are still good. But at that point, just buy noodles. 
Yes, with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload more content. I feel really weird having to, like, beg for all to do this every time in a video, but, like, apparently, you know, it's very necessary in order to actually, uh, get it to work. Thank you, everybody, so much for supporting me as much as y'all do so far, and, uh, I'll see you all in the next video. I really appreciate you watching. Bye.